OK, I, I think that we can start. You should be able to see my screen. I will just now make it uh, present mode. So welcome, everyone, on Functional Group Update for the CICD team. Uh, today, uh, let's maybe start with the uh, accomplishments. As usual, we did crazy amount of the work. Uh, not everything. Uh, for 9.3, we had uh, almost 80 mergers, uh, over 70 issues closed. It's like basically crazy amount given uh, how much, I, I know how much everyone did like focus on getting uh, our things being shipped. We actually deliver some very cool features like the pipeline graph uh, for multi-project pipelines. We are also like working right now on finishing artifacts downloading with job token. With the help of Dimitri and Filipa, we did have the, uh, the first iteration of GitHub code quality. So thank you very much for jumping in. Uh, with 9.4, we also uh, have uh, an option to store artifacts on object storage. So we start migrating our data away. And we actually did some work on the front end, some work on the back end. And we also learned, unfortunately, a little in quite unpleasant way, uh, a lot from our database problems. Uh, on which I will talk a little more in a few seconds. And which is like the, I think our biggest accomplishment is just having Xenia join us as intern. Uh, so welcome Xenia. And also we will have senior CICD developer joining on the 4th, uh, 14th of August. So we are just looking uh, forward to the new manpower basically. But if we talk about the low lights, as usual, not everything goes as it's planned. Uh, like one of the low lights is that we uh, make a lot of changes to the job log, but they didn't work out as we planned. So we are actually kind of working now on backing off from the decision and going to the previous design, which seems to be much better than what we have now uh, with this uh, indie scroll instead of like full page scroll, which also showed that there is like numerous problems with the new navigation bar that is right now present on dev. Mm, this is something that is Philippa right now pretty much finishing. It's, it's pretty much finished and we, are, we actually revealed some of these changes for 9.4. And we also spent crazy amount of time, you probably heard about these issues uh, already on retrospective, on the database migration, we actually going again, trying that again, um, but like changing the approach after having very extensive discussion on database and actually being able to reproduce all deadlocks, all problems, and also understanding why it did happen in the first place. Uh, but we actually, not really, but uh, we will not be, we will be right now doing this change again, uh, but using the uh, newly introduced background migration. So we just migrate the data, but this migration will take uh, hours or maybe even days if it's really needed. But also like looking for 9.4, what is happening and what we plan to ship. It's actually really crazy because it seems that we did schedule a lot of updates for variables. Uh, we are working on pipeline schedule variables. I know that the build team is looking very into it. Grab level secret variables is also something that, uh, that is very requested uh, feature of the community. And also working on in premium feature environment specific variables, which in general basically improves the security of the GitLab. Uh, also GitLab runner, uh, due to like uh, problems that we faced recently, we are introducing better timeouts, introducing cache policies uh, for GitLab Runner. Actually, cache policies is being implemented by someone outside of the team. It's the Nick. Thank you very much, Nick, for doing that. And also like, extending our docker configuration to support uh, services, entry points, and services aliases. And also, we are working on the, a lot of real time stuff and other security improvements. But what is actually interesting also for us and our work, our daily work, is CI on GitLab.com. So 
we had very ambitious plan of uh, this issue CI production readiness. It's very ambitious, but we actually have quite good progress of that because we improved a lot in how we handle auto scanning and how our system is behaving in case of failures. And we also almost finished creating base image that will be our image that we'll be using for every machine that is being provisioned. Uh, I will not go into detail what exactly this image will have due to some other reasons, but it will include, include some security, additional security measures to actually make sure that we are aware of what is happening on, uh, from the infrastructure point of view uh, on our jobs. And then actually when we have this base image, this is like one step forward and we have the Prometheus monitoring for every job that is running on GitLab.com. It's really cool. Mm. And I believe that we should have console pretty much ready in one or two weeks from now mm. and be ready to start some tinkering with the Prometheus monitoring for auto scaled machines. Why it is important? Because sometimes we face uh, problems. Recently we faced problems with the cache server. There were, you actually see there is four different issues with the different outages of the cache server. Basically the problem with the cache server was that there were a number of misconfigurations uh, that we improved, uh, that the server was not really being scared to the load that was put on it, but also the way how runner did work with the cache server was not the best because we did not have timeouts in the place for our cache operations, which in turn uh, make it our release process much uh, go much less smoother because we had the CI jobs being stuck on fetching or pushing caches, uh, making configurable uh, timeouts, uh, using rate to, in to increase the cache server capacity. It is already showing that it's just helping and also cache policies. GitLab C is a very unique case where we have over 50 jobs. Uh, each of these jobs actually pull and push cache, which is very wasteful to be fair. So uh, with the release of new GitLab runner version, basically only one job will push the cache, but every other job will only uh, fetch the cache, not really try to update that. But we also uh, prepare a lot of changes for HA for the cache server and uh, monitoring to be actually be aware much sooner about potential problems and not really be notified by uh, our customers, by community or anyone from the team that something is uh, not working properly. Uh, but cache server is just one of the problems. The other problems is just cryptocurrency miners. Uh, I will not go into details because there is like a lot of uh, very, uh, there is like detailed description about what we do, uh, what is the cost of running and what our like midterm plans for solve the Bitcoin miners. Basically it's, to be fair, it's not solvable uh, fully, but implementing number of measures, some of them are already in place we can make it much harder for people abusing gitlab.com. As you can see, this is the graph from the seven days. Uh, this is one week. And I would say, guess when we implement, implemented some measures for Bitcoin miners. So uh, at some point, our gitlab.com shared runner capacity is right now configured to 800 jobs at single time. Because we actually often upgrading GitLab Runner Manager, we are not always having this 800 capacity. But as you can see, we, previously it was very easy actually to saturate the shared runners with uh, Bitcoin miners. And after just introducing this change, our expected numbers of uh, shared runner beats uh, running on average is around 100, 150, but not. 800. That's like the main difference here. Mm. But like going um, outside of the gitlab.com, I know that a lot of our customers is asking for Jenkins integration. 
And I know that GitHub plugin for Jenkins is not really maintained uh, by anyone, and it still uses GitHub API v3. Mm, but we just focus on making sure that GitHub uh, plugin for Jenkins we continue working after 9.5. So basically, this is when we're gonna dismiss API v4 v3 and replace that in, with v4. But actually, if you go to these two issues, we want to change a little how we work with Jenkins. Uh, first of all, we want to change our, uh, sorry. First of all, we want to ensure that people using GitHub get very good experience with using Jenkins and they choose GitLab CI because GitLab CI is simply more awesome, not because they are just limited to use GitLab CI because Jenkins, uh, it's not uh, maintained by us. So we we'll continue supporting Jenkins. We have quite, I believe, decent long-term plan how we want to support Jenkins in the best way possible to make sure that to some extent Jenkins is on par with GitLab CI and just uh, propose this organic growth of GitLab CI, uh, not really like the first one. So if you're interested about GitLab plugin development, please go to these two issues. You will find more information about them. And I also have one announcement. Uh, Jenshink uh, will be joining the Edge team. Uh, thank you for your hard work, Jenshin, for the CICD team. We, we kind of thought about that because Jenshin for some time was do, were doing a lot of backstage stuff, stuff that was about the CI performance, our testing performance, a lot of uh, about community contributions. And this is actually what is the Edge team doing. And we thought that Jenshin would be like the great person to be CI injected specialist into Edge team. Because Jenshin actually knows very well about all like backstage, backstage quirks of how GitHub CI is working. And it seems that Jenshin work focused more on backstage performance, test performance, uh, stability performance would help everyone in the company, not only the CI CD team specifically. So Jenshin, congratulations. Thank you for your work on the CI CD. Uh, team and good luck with being edge team specialist and keep like pushing changes to CI still. Mm. I believe that's it. Do, do we have any questions? Andrew stumbled across the other day looking for GitLab plugin maintainers. But Jenshin, we are still welcoming you on our CICD team updates every week. <laughs> okay, so thank you, everyone. Have a good day. Uh, see you on team update.